The eastern North Pacific grey whales are experiencing an unexplained mortality event. This UME was first declared in 2019 and continues to this day. A UME is defined as a stranding that is unexpected, involves a significant die-off of any marine mammal population and demands immediate response. The UME was declared as many more grey whale strandings than usual were being sighted along their migratory route on the west coast of North America, all the way from Alaska to Mexico. It had increased roughly tenfold, and some of the dead whales were emaciated, some were too decomposed to be able to tell. Some of the whales had been hit by ships, and others were found to be entangled in fishing gear. Predation by orcas is also another reason for their death. Mortalities due to disease and biotoxins could not be identified. Recent data published by NOAA shows that this UME has continued into 2022, with numbers of live grey whales from the latest survey continuing to decline. The eastern North Pacific grey whales feed in the cold Alaskan waters of the North Bering and Chukchi seas. Some have been seen feeding in waters of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon and North California. These are called the Pacific Coast Feeding Group. Around mid-October, they start to head south to the warm waters of Baja, California. They give birth along the way or in the shallow lagoons found in Mexico, such as San Ignacio Lagoon. Kissing grey whales in Baja, California was one of my first videos, uploaded in February 2020, and tells of just how amazingly friendly these whales are, coming up to the boats to be petted, and mothers even coming up with their calves, encouraging them to say hello. From mid-February to May, the whales migrate back to their feeding grounds, with mothers and calves leaving last, giving the calves a bit more time to grow strong ready for the journey, which is a round trip of a staggering 20,000 miles. Regular shore-based surveys of their population are undertaken by the Southwest Fisheries Science Centre. Grey whale abundance has been collected since 1967 and targets the main southward migration period of late December to mid-February. The last survey took place between the 28th of December 2021 and the 18th of February 2022. The estimated total abundance of whales during this migration was 16,650, which is a decline of 19.6% from the previous survey, which took place during the 2019 and 2020 southward migration, and had an estimated abundance of 20,580 individuals. In 2016, there was a peak in number of 26,960. Since then, numbers have declined by 38%. These fluctuations in numbers have been noted before, with the UME also being declared in 1999 to 2001. The cause of this mortality event was never discovered, but similar to the UME occurring at the present time, many stranded whales had poor body condition which led to the hypothesis as to whether the population had reached its carrying capacity for the Arctic feeding ground. NOAA is monitoring the number of grey whales and their body condition in the hope of seeing an upturn as on previous occasions and being informed in a timely way if that does not occur. The number of calves sighted is also a cause for concern. Since 1994, Numbers of mother calf pairs have been counted each year from Piedras Blancas Lighthouse Station in Central California. In 2022, total calf production was 206.7, which is the lowest estimate since the survey started. Numbers in 2021 and 2019 were also low. Two previous periods of low calf production also lasted three to four years each, in 1999 to 2001 and 2007 to 2010. 1999 to 2000 were also years in which a UME was declared, and there is a linear relationship between estimated abundance and estimated calf production, suggesting that the factors driving mortality and fecundity may be similar. In a paper published in January 21, the authors took drone footage of the grey whales in Ignacio Lagoon to investigate and compare yearly variation in grey whale body condition in 2017, 2018 and 2019. They found that body condition in 2018 and 2019 was significantly lower compared to that in 2017 and concluded 
that the current UME was associated with poor body condition of whales on the Mexican breeding grounds. The decline in body condition occurred either during the previous feeding season or during the southbound of migration, or both, and suggests that some individuals would not have had sufficient energy reserves to sustain themselves through the winter breeding season. The fact that these whales still undertook the migration demonstrates that grey whales are obligate migrators. Although starvation could have played an important role in the current UME, other factors such as disease and ship strikes could not be ruled out. So why are these whales undergoing their migration in poor body condition? What exactly is happening to their food source? As previously mentioned, grey whales feed in the Arctic during the summer months. The extent of Arctic sea ice at the September minimum has reduced by 50% and sea ice thickness has reduced by 75%. This is having a huge impact on Arctic and subarctic marine ecosystems and there is growing concern that this is impacting the availability of the grey whale's food. Amongst the baleen whales, grey whales have a unique way of feeding. They roll onto their sides and swim along the bottom of the seabed filtering the soft sediment for their food. They are known to be able to switch between various prey species depending upon availability. For example, they enjoy feasting upon the small animals that live within the sediments, their primary food being amphipods, but they will also feed upon creatures that live on the sediments and just above, as well as krill found in the water column. In a paper published in April of this year, scientists investigated the distribution of grey whales in relation to the variability of their prey which in turn is affected by physical factors such as sea ice extent, ocean temperature, salinity and wind forcing. Unfortunately, they found no definitive answers. There was no simple cause and effect. In some areas, food availability had increased and in one other, it had decreased. The authors concluded that for those whales that feed north of the Bering Sea, they have found a context for the poor nutritional condition of the grey whales but not a cause, and that continued research and monitoring is crucial. That grey whales are starving is undeniable. One can see it from the drone footage and the carcasses of many whales washed ashore after death, along with the heartbreaking reports of some whales trying to feed in the lagoons of Baja, California. Other factors such as entanglement in fishing gear and ship strikes are also playing their part in the demise of the eastern grey whales. And all it seems that we can do is keep counting them and hope that next year or the year after we will hear that their numbers are starting to increase as they have in the past. With more research and continued monitoring of numbers hopefully the scientists can piece together why these events are occurring and if it is something to do with us humans perhaps we can put in place some strategies to mitigate our effect upon them and save these wonderfully friendly whales. If you enjoyed this video then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.